What's an image at infinity, and how would you get one? Well, if the image is at infinity, we want di to be either plus or minus infinity, if it's like infinitely beyond the lens or infinitely before the lens. Uh, either way, 1 over infinity we can essentially treat as being 0. So this term is effectively gone in the lens or mirror equation. We're left with the focal length equals do. In other words, to get an image at infinity, you put the object right on top of the focal point. Remember, if you're farther out than the focal point, you'll get an inverted real image. If you're closer than the focal point, you're going to get an enlarged virtual image, right? Depending on whether the lens is in movie projector mode or magnifying glass mode. So this is what happens when you land it exactly on. So the ray diagram doesn't quite work, right? You're, we're used to drawing three beams, but you can only get two out of this. If this is the lens and its focal point, and you put the object here, what are we going to see? We're going to see a beam parallel that then goes through the focal point on the other side. Then we're also going to see a beam that goes through the center of the lens like a window. Now, despite my artwork, uh, these beams actually are parallel. So if they're parallel beams, they're not going to meet. So some people are like, well, does that make they meet at infinity over here or infinity back there? You gotta remember, someone's eye is over here. They're looking at this incoming light. Ultimately, that's what we're always trying to interpret. Uh, someone is here saying, where did those beams come from? Well, if you look at the moon or something at essentially infinite distance, the beams are coming in pretty much parallel. So that's what it looks like. It looks as if there is an object at infinity. But we can't talk about you know regular magnification because it'd be infinitely high. So what do we use instead? What we use instead is called angular magnification. What you can do is say, all right, imagine that the person's eye is here and they're looking at this light. If they didn't have the lens, they would effectively see the object as being that big in terms of angle. But what they're seeing instead is that big. The image is effectively covering that much angle. The angle that's seen divided by the angle original gives us our new formula for angular magnification. Angular magnification is theta that's seen over the theta original. This magnification can multiply other magnifications. Your overall magnification will be angular. So if you have two lenses, and the first one did a magnification of negative two, and then the second lens had this at its focal point, your final image is in infinity, you have an angular magnification of, say, 5, and if the other was negative 2, then you get negative 10. So you can still multiply the magnifications. Your final answer will be angular magnification. By the way, the reason they do this is because when you're looking off at infinity, your eye muscles are relaxed. It's actually easier, there's less eye strain, to stare off at infinity. That's why when you're lost in thought, you look like you're staring off into space. You're not like squinting because you're not paying attention to your eye muscles, so they're relaxing. When you're making a telescope or a microscope, they figure they might as well design it so it's easy to use, so you don't have to squint while looking into it. They will always position the eyepiece such that the next to last image is sitting on its focal point so that the very final image will be off at infinity, which is just easier for your eyes to see. That's the idea. 